normal poll that will attract credibility will be a poll that clearly, in one breath as you release the report, you must also release the sample size and the margin of error. These are basics. Mm -hmm. Because the sample size and the margin of error will help in identifying whether the polling is, was actually carried out correctly or not. But then, because of the result, I am tempted to believe that this polling was carried out online. Because Peter will be online has a measure of people who are very active for him, much more than the other candidate. And I will tell you why. Because there was an algorithm search, and uh, yes, algorithm and data analytics that was carried out that came up with a finding that 57.5% of people who follow Peter Obi and engage for him on social media do not live in Nigeria. In fact, majority of whom are bots on Twitter. They are not real human beings. If you take away 57.5% of the people who are active for him, who probably live abroad and they don't have voters card, they are likely not to come to vote, then what it means is that Peter Obi is basking in the euphoria of hallucination. And this result, this uh, polling is a true reflection of that. I will not even go deeper to talk about the pollsters that they are surrogates of Peter Obi. But the interesting thing you can find out from the result is that if you look at, they say there's a finding from 46 years to 59, and 61 above are the ones, the most, that say they are willing to vote. Meanwhile, Peter Obi's report says that Peter Obi's uh, movement is that he has the millennials and the demographics of the young people. So how do you just oppose this? In the polling, they said older people are the ones that are showing excitement to vote, but in real life, he is saying that his strength is drawn from the community of young people. Then with respect to the second point, when you talk about the chances of a political party, if you look at all the other political parties, you will see you have rightly answered the, asked the question. They all lean towards a particular geopolitical zone. For a candidate to become a president in Nigeria, that person must score the highest majority of the local vote cast and must have at least 25% in 24 states of the federation. While, for example, NNP is saying we are making inroad into the east, PDP is saying we are already there. While uh, Labour are saying we are trying to make inroad into the north, PDP is saying we are already there. While NN people are saying we are likely to have a problem with the east because of Peter Obi is there, PDP is even making the bold statement to say we are not only there, but we are dominant and controlling there because as I speak to you today, and you can verify, there is not a single stakeholder in the entire southeast that is supporting Peter Obi. It is still the social media people. And that is why I even released a tweet today to say that this manipulative strategy that is reflected in the form of polling is to give Nigerians a false sense of belief that Peter Obi is active or stands a chance. And like I told you about, for you to become a president, you must have the highest vote and 25% in 24 states. Peter Obi, if he's able to win three states in Nigeria, I will throw the biggest party for him. Our own candidate, Atiku Abubakar, in the 2023 election, will win this election with a margin of not less than 7 million votes. And let me say one final thing. Because they make the case, they try to make the case we have 22 state governors. Hear this. People have not taken the time to look at the amended electoral act. With the electronic transmission of results, there is little a governor can do to influence election. Right. 